everyone and welcome to the Halloween spook no actually we're not going to call it that I hate it when things are called spooktacular at Halloween makes me cringe makes me want to cut my skin off anyway uh, do welcome indeed to the Halloween video what we are doing uh, filming anything special for the season got a bit fucked up I mean I was gonna have a sexy vampire cat suit and everything but it shipped without a zipper so before we get cracking with today's video, I have a spooky Halloween story for you. So settle in, content warning by the way, for upchuck references, and well, I guess we could call it medical body horror. So, uh, this weekend had a wrestling booking, was traveling with a friend and colleague who I quite like. So like, I was trying to be like hot and sexy at him uh, for most of the day. Um, I'll let you know how that ended up. Uh, later that evening, I threw up all over his bathroom because the HRT I'm currently on has convinced my body that it's pregnant. Fun. Friend and Rumi comes home, sees me walk out the bathroom in just my bra because I had to take my top off uh, because it was getting in the way while I was doing cleanup. And he sees me and then looks around and just uh, says to our friend, have you two been shagging? And I said, no, actually, I do believe I've just fucked that up by the way I owe both of you new toothbrushes. Swing and a miss. Uh, by the way, darling, uh, so, speaking of swinging and missing, we're talking about a game called Stray Souls this week. When you're cruising through the cosmos, you won't believe your eyes. There's always something new to see. When you're flying through the galaxy, there's always a surprise. So why don't you fly with me? Astro fun, astro fun. If someone was hitting the like button on some truly heinous and hateful social media posts and then, when called out, quietly and surreptitiously started unliking them, I think I'd have less respect for that person than I would an outspoken scumbag fascist. At least the one actively mouthing off has a measure of tangible conviction. Don't get me wrong, fucker would be a Nazi, fucker would deserve to have his skull punched in, but you know. There'd be some vertebrae under that cranium. But no, to hold those opinions and go far enough to support their publication, but worm away the moment you face the slightest bit of heat for it? That's just... pathetic. That's outright bitch behaviour. The behaviour of a bitch. Behaviourally bitch-esque. Of course, I'm sure what I'm saying here is purely hypothetical. Nobody could be that much of a craven. Right? There's no way this is real, this is... Oh, Jesus. So anyway, Stray Souls is a game I mentioned on this show a few weeks ago, and I really wish I hadn't. It's gross. It's gross in several distinct ways, one of those rare slices of grossness that manages to gross it up in enough directions to gross out not just marginalised people, but the capital G gamers who instinctively rally round games that make marginalised people feel gross. It only comes along once in a blue moon, but the universally detestable game is an event worthy of celebration. Truly a cause to rejoice! Yes, that's right. Stray Souls is a game we all get to despise. It's a Christmas of contempt, a Diwali of disgust, a Hanukkah of how in the fuck did this game's bullshit fly under the radar this long? I really didn't dress right to go on a hike today. <laughs> I don't think I've had my interest in a game drop so swiftly and so comprehensively before said game is even out. From its use of disgusting tech practices, to the dev's suppression of criticism, to the director's disgusting and cowardly expressions of bigotry, the one thing Stray Souls has successfully managed to do is fucking sicken most of the people who've ended up hearing about it. Somehow, this game managed to get legendary Silent Hill composer Akira Yamaoka to lend a sense of undeserved pedigree to the project. Beyond that though, the game has launched to a chorus of negative reviews, among the many things criticised to the general sense of everything being broken, shit animations, nonsensical bad writing, distinctly unintelligent enemies, and combat that comes off like a bottom of the barrel Dark Souls knockoff. I wasn't going to touch the thing at all because, well, 
I have this perhaps quirky little personal policy of not wanting to pay for games made by people who'd be happy to see me and anybody like me dead. Weird, I know. However, I have my ways of getting games for free, not blowjobs, and I did acquire a copy. So I tried it a bit to see for myself and... Yeah. Shit's more rough than Elizabethan neckwear. Wait, what? Stray Souls is like someone decided Silent Hill would be better if it was worse. The gurning whiner of a player character is controlled with all the elegance of a drunk baby pushing a lawnmower. The script is embarrassingly written and seems to think that context is a storyline pretension best left for the birds. The animations are, well, this is meant to be creepy. Combat is a clunky mess, obviously. What strikes me most immediately, though, is the utterly terrible communication and presentation of ideas to the player. The Within the first 10 minutes, you get two banal survival horror puzzles. A clock and a piano, how original. With the vague objective of solve the puzzle. No, seriously, that's what the game just tells you to do. And that aforementioned rejection of context really adds to the terribly uninformative scenarios. The piano you solve by playing numbered keys in an order revealed by paintings that were previously uninteractive. So you didn't know they were important enough to go look for. And the clock you... you guess? I think you just guess. You don't have to guess very hard, it's midnight. How original. The overwrought dialogue combines with absurd facial animations to resemble a cartoon made by Tommy Wiseau. What makes you say that? Like those paintings, items only become interactive when the game decides you need them, which means I didn't know I could get more ammo from the little junk pile that our protagonist had already told me was useless. Oh, and the game screeches at you constantly. This is the kind of hackneyed horror shit that I would completely expect from a former Bloober Team dev. Lol. Okay, so here's the game's first boss. I thought I'd uh, walk you through my experience with this uh, uh, enthralling, let's say, encounter. So there he is, cheeky chappy, loving it, having a laugh. Um, kind of hesitant to do anything beyond screaming at us. Uh, actually, uh, you will find out that this boss is a bit of a gentleman. Uh, does not start the encounter until I get the first shot. Uh, so I get one free hit. Um, I just thought I'd uh, just, just to wait a little bit just to show you exactly how patient this big hairy bloke in the forest actually is. Uh, and I have met a few big hairy blokes in the forest who don't mind waiting. Yeah. So, oh, here we go. Creeping closer. Come on. Come, no, no. No, changed his mind. Uh, just completely backing up into the house. Sort of literally into the house. Um. <laughs> oh, by the way, this is just the prelude. This is just the uh, the appetizer for the rest of one of the most incredible, amazing, astounding shit. No, we'll go with shit. Uh, one of the shittest boss encounters I've ever had the uh, dubious pleasure of experiencing in a game. Um, oh, I forgot to point out uh, earlier uh, they had an idle animation for the character where he just yawned huge fucking forest troll bearing down on him and the action is so exciting he does oh here we go uh, gonna pick up the action here uh, the weapon aiming is like has just a bit of a, uh, an unwieldy swing to it so lining up that first shot always needs a little bit of course correction um you'll notice that uh, every time we roll in this particular combat arena we get to see underneath the floor uh, which is always the sign of a quality horror game um 
I mean, it's certainly always the sign of a shitty horror game on Steam. Uh, one of the um, telltale signs that you're dealing with a shitty um, asset flip, which this game, I, I assume, isn't uh, as random and contextless as the enemies are. Um, but it's got all the quality hallmarks of a shitty Steam horror asset flip. Uh, so the boss is just getting on with it. Uh, people have criticised the AI in this game. Um, it really doesn't mind wildly swinging at nothing. When it does swing at you, the player, there's a, let's say, a 75% chance that it will miss. Um, you'll notice I'm not shooting. This is because I can't. Uh, I'm replacing and, uh, well, putting away and pulling back out the weapon. Uh, I've been hammering reload, hammering aim, um, can't do anything. Uh, we'll, I will find out in a few moments that the um, process of getting hit by the boss allows me to, there we are, allows me to aim once again. Um, it seemed that for this particular encounter, whenever my gun was empty or I tried to reload it at all, uh, that's when it just forgot how aiming works. I couldn't aim the gun, I couldn't fire the gun. Uh, that boss is uh, treating that tree, by the way, as if it's not there. Uh, makes me think of that Kong game that came out recently, uh, Rise of Kong, which I've been playing for a review. I was actually going to make this week's episode about Rise of Kong and the publisher's dodgy behaviour with that, but you know, this came along and it's it's Halloween after all. Uh, so we've got some ammo, the boss again just sort of getting stuck on the scenery, missing us constantly. Um, you'll notice the camera really struggles to keep up with any of it. Um, we, we're kind of clipping through it. Fucking hell. The game overall, I say the camera can't handle what's going on. It, it seems like the game itself can't cope with what's happening. Um, can't keep the enemies on screen. Can't get an enemy of that size to properly interact with the protagonist's character model. Um, one interesting thing is the boss, I think, and I only think, is supposed to have a grab attack but it doesn't seem to ever pull off. There seems to be a bit of an animation of his fist going round. And I could be wrong. This boss is a sort of interpretive dance, uh, some sort of, of high um, esoteric art at any rate. And I can only sort of guess as to the developer's intentions. Um, can be a little hard to to interact with these little junk piles just because you need to make sure that the prompt is on screen and the character moves like a uh, well a little ball of shit on the end of a stick being waved by a toddler it must look like he was going to stamp there but then just changed his mind uh, without much of a, of a transitionary animation um, to communicate that Oh, hello. Uh, just uh, playing peekaboo uh, between his legs. And who doesn't like a little bit of bendy crotch peekaboo? The whole thing is just an absolute disaster. Just a fucking state. And there we go. Fuck me. It's a bad game, basically. One that serves a fine example of just how little it can mean when you attach a famous name to your project. Yamaoka's involvement was the most likely reason anybody had even heard of it. It was enough to make the game newsworthy, but he's the music guy. Not the visual artist, not the animator, not the director. The only thing his involvement could directly promise was a decent soundtrack, which... Yeah, that is about the only decent thing it has. Beyond that, nothing about his name value could stop Stray Souls being fucking shit. Before we continue, let me offer an alternative. What the fuck did you just say? I tried to say alternate and alternative at the same time. 
Before we continue, let me offer an alternative horror game that I think stands in stark contrast. Sorry We're Closed, which released a demo on Steam a few days ago, is looking fantastically promising. Described to me as Queer Silent Hill, which is obviously why I checked it out, its demo shows off a damn good bit of survival horror that impressively treads the line between retro and bloody playable. Seems a fantastic antithesis to Stray Souls. I mean, Sorry We're Closed at least doesn't have an AI generated picture of Brian Cranston with fucked up hands. Yes, Stray Souls uses AI art. This is something we're going to have to brace for a lot in games going forward, and if we want to keep that vile poison out of the medium, we're going to have to be just as relentless in our rejection of it as we were with NFTs. There's a reason why so many online NFT evangelists are now dickhead AI shills, using the same kind of railroading imposing rhetoric they used for those nasty fucking things. It's the same scam! Yet more attempts by vulgar and cynical tech bros to cut artists out of art for the sake of parasitic profiteering. If you use AI generated art in your commercial product, fuck you, you're a hack. That's what you are. I'm done entertaining exceptions or allowances anymore. I think a hardline stance is the only way to push back on what is essentially plagiarism technology. AI's very name is a lie. It's not artificial intelligence, it's just a shitty algorithm pieced together from existing content that's made by people. AI art is generated from a glorified database of every piece of artwork trawled, cannibalised and reconstituted without compensating the artist responsible and with zero respect for said artist's permission and boundaries. What is it with tech bros and their utter contempt for the concept of consent? Anyway, these little tech fads are born to maliciously spite artistic creativity. It should hardly be surprising that video games using so-called AI art are almost always fucking embarrassing. You can't be an advocate for tools designed to explicitly bypass skill, experience and artistic integrity while possessing any of those qualities yourself. Do you know Nicola Grossman? I don't have time for this. In an absolutely classic shitty developer move, the outfit behind this hack fuck game, Yukai Studio, is banning critics from the Steam forums because that's always gone down well with the community, hasn't it? People critical of the terrible game have reported both forum bans and social media blocks, as the studio remains steadfast in its refusal to acknowledge any critique of Stray Souls. This account is one such to report being barred from discussion merely for agreeing with others on the game's low quality, and they were blocked on Twitter by the official Stray Souls account shortly after talking about the ban on the forums. It seems that, for a game directed by someone who thinks trans people need toughening up, there are some real thin fucking skins over at Jukai Studio. Oh yeah, it should go without saying that my aggressively passive statement towards the beginning of this video was about the game's director and overall creative lead, Artur Lukzgowski, who indeed had been liking a bunch of racism and transphobia online before it was noticed by folks, eventually being picked up by longtime horror game critic Bob's Vids. Artur particularly seems to hate queer representation, naturally agreeing with the political wedge that is banning trans people from sports, and joining the throng of tiresome wankers who cry about the slightest bit of non cis head acknowledgement in Naughty Dog games. How trite. It's funny that despite being on estrogen, progesterone and spirolactone, I've got more balls than Artur Lekskowski will ever have, since he hasn't had the nerve to either voice or stand by his opinions. Rather, we should say the opinions he's tried to quietly, meekly agree with. You know, like John Blow. Anyway, the moment he was called out, rather than own his shit opinions, he folded like a house of spunk-soaked cards and started unliking stuff. All on the hush-hush, of course. At the time of writing, neither he, Jukai, or the platforms that have been selling and advertising Stray Souls have had the nerve to say anything about it. I'm not carrying all this shit with my bare hands. It's just a layer cake of fucking cowardice. I honestly mean it when I say I would have more respect for Stray Souls' director if he just called me a slur. Just do it, little man. You have my permission to do it. That's my treat to you. Go on. Enjoy yourself. Just do something to indicate you can stand for anything. No 
girl is gonna date me. There's no wider overarching point to today's video other than I guess if you're gonna make a horror game don't make a broken shitty one with AI generated content piss poor animation and a bigoted developer who's allergic to a bit of criticism. But anyway. A fair few people were looking forward to just seeing me give this game a well-deserved drubbing, and since it's Halloween, there's an appropriate flavour to something that, well, I was happy to do anyway. Fuck racist, transphobic, fashy wankers. Fuck them. But goddamn. This is not the first time I've mentioned, or worse, praised a game in my content, only to find out it was made by a hateful cunt. Skeleton Warriors! It's fucking grim that we have to research games to make sure they aren't made by abusers or people who want to see you murdered. So anyway, let's look at the current Ubisoft lineup. See, man, Zilla. It's all the extra poo that makes a difference. By the by, big shout out to the people who, when it was revealed that the director of the game was a massive racist transphobe, uh, all the people who said, oh wow, thanks for selling me the game, looks like they just got a sale out of me, uh, I think it's a really fine example of how fucked you are and how much you're wasting your money when you go out spike buying bullshit. I hope anyone who did buy it out of spike got to play it and realised that they just wasted 30 fucking bucks on a shitty AI driven poorly written, broken fucking game. I mentioned earlier in the video that um, the game is not an asset flip, but Friends of the Showcase Explosion did point out that people have um, seen the monsters that are in the game uh, potentially on the Unreal Asset Store. So maybe not a full asset flip by the definition, but between that and the AI art, one wonders exactly how much original art is even in the game at all. So spike buyers who throw their money around in a desperate flailing attempt to trigger the libs. <laughs> you got suckered, you stupid bastards. Thank God for me.